Hello YouTubers, welcome to the video today. This one's going to be an absolute cracker of a video and I'm so glad um, you're going to be able to enjoy it when you watch at home. Anyway, it's been over a week since I've had the railway out because last weekend I was really busy. So unfortunately there was no trains, no maintenance work, nothing. So I couldn't get on and do things. The only things that you've actually seen me do is during the week um, I've done the wiring for the lights on the layout. So today is the actual grand unveiling of what I've been doing and hopefully uh, you'll get as much joy out of seeing it as what I do making this video for you. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Okay, so looking at what I've done so far, um, as is the way with every time I set up the layout on the weekend, it's never straightforward. There's always loads of snags that I run into and that have got to be addressed before I start making the videos. And today was no exception. Sod's law kicked in and I had to get around to install these new Pico telegraph poles, um, which are here. And to be honest, they're much more nicer than the old ones, I think. They come all painted and ready, um, together with the little insulators that sit on the top of the beams there. And the reason that I've put these in is because no longer does the telegraph run go across the level crossing and round that curve and on the edge of the layout there. Because what was happening, if I come over here with the camera, guys, and show you, it makes more sense. Um, this is the um, top end of the layout. And this is the actual part of the layout that sits on the floor when the layout is being stored away. So in between lowering the layout onto the floor and obviously um, storing it away. The telegraph poles that were sort of along this edge were getting absolutely hammered. And in the end, there was one that was leaning over really quite badly. If you look on my previous videos, you'll see it. Um, and they just were getting destroyed. So I thought, you know what, we need to solve that problem and get them out of the way completely. So what I've done, I've rerouted the telegraph poles. They go across the signal box now from that one. And then there's a nice, run that goes along in the 10 foot area of that wide way um, one by the outlet signal there it goes back across the track to the signal box there quite rightly so and then across the track again from that new one there by the signal and then across to the m1 there which i put in this morning the most fiddly part of doing all this was the the uh, fine cotton to replicate the telegraph wires. I did learn a colorful new language that impressed my neighbors, I'm sure. Um, but getting super glue over one's fingers and thumbs is not a joke. It's not funny, especially when you've got to sandpaper it all off. Anyway, the things you do for a hobby, eh? Anyway, they're in place and the good thing is about it, they never will get uh, bent or destroyed ever again. They're in place out of the way, so they won't get touched now. They're in there uh, for life, literally. So the other thing I did as well this morning, um, I got around to putting some more rocks behind on that little outcrop there with the trees. Those are PVA glued in place at the moment. They're just drying those two large rocks there. And those two little rocks over there, these little buddy to keep in company. <laughs> um, again, a big thanks to my friend Steve uh, from Ohio, who lives in California and he sent me these rocks from his back garden and he said they will look quite nice in your layout and I quite agree they do look um, more lifelike and they bring that scene to life a little bit I think. They're held in place with PVA glue so they're drying at the moment and then over on the tunnel I've put some more up there on the top of the tunnel again all that white gunk is PVA glue that's drying since this morning so by this evening when it's time to dismantle the layout and put away um, they will be quite safe in place. I think they won't move. Um, they will be okay. So as the video title suggests today, it's called Lights, Camera, Action. So let's look at these street lights I've put in um, and where they are on the layout. So here we go. There's one by the level crossing there on the other side of the road, one outside the factory. There's one up by the bus stop, which is there. One outside the school by the police box or TARDIS there. There's one next to the fire station. 
right there. And then I've got a couple at the back of the station there. One, two, three, four. I just about make that in between that building there. Um, and they all look rather good. If, if we come down with the camera back along the street, and then we come down at waist level for me, but eye level for you. I think they look quite nice, don't they? Really pleased with those. So they're super glued in place. And then if we come out with the camera a little bit, there's one there, and then they're all the way along that little street scene. All the way along, all the way along to the end. And again, they're powered from a 12 volt power pack. So that's there. If we come underneath, the subterranean world of the baseboard below street level. Here's all the wiring that we talked about the other night in the video. That's where it all lives now temporarily when it gets set up and take, to, taken down. That's where it lives. And it's all connected via those terminal blocks. All of my connections are terminal block connected. So it's a plug and play system. So everything lay outside is connected to some jumper cables that go into the controller that sits on this shelf that I've made. Um, it's a plug and play portable system so it's very portable and you can plug it in and you can play so there we go right as the title suggests lights camera action let's do so so i think first thing we'll do is we'll get that uh, dmu out the yard so let's turn some lights on here let's get those illuminated for a start Bring that to a stop in the station. Over there, are. like that.
Okay, everybody. Um, well, that's it for today. I know it didn't seem very long, um, but I want to really crack on with the rest of my evening before I, it gets too late and I end up not having any dinner because I have to put this away before I go to bed. So um, I know it's been a reasonably shortish video. If, it, if it's been too short, I apologise. Um, but what I'm going to do, definitely in the middle of next week, I will have the layout out again before the weekend because it's half term over here in the UK. The kids are off school for just over a week, so bonus. So we might get to play trains definitely again in the middle of next week. Also, um, there's a couple of things I want to address before I close this video. Firstly, big huge thank you for all your support and uh, thumbs up, and likes and comments. Don't forget to keep subscribing and hit the thumbs up. But also, um, next week I've got some items coming from eBay. I'll say no more, but I can't wait to show you them because they really are some, some brilliant things. Um, definitely some crackers to show you. And I look forward to reviewing those and showing them uh, on the channel uh, when, it, when they come, I think, Thursday next week, actually. So when it gets to Wednesday, Thursday, um, I'll make another video and you can see those and we can all share those together. Second thing for I go, um, I've been filming this, obviously, today for you guys watching this at home, wherever you are around the world. Um, but one of the things that's really sort of brought my attention whilst filming is this control panel. It's really unsightly now that we've got the street scene going on because you can't see the darn thing. I've spent so much effort and time and money in doing this, um, but yet you can't see the beauty of it. So I think what I'm thinking about doing is two solutions. I'm thinking about taking this control shelf off of this table edge and putting it either temporarily on uh, a chair or something to, to bring it down more or these two holes one there and one where is it one there originally I designed it so it would fit on the edge of the baseboard when it had a proper frame that I made or attempted to make um, as you see from the early days of the layout if you skip through the channel um, <coughs> excuse me so what I was thinking about doing was if we come down here a little second a little idea this material is really, really very, very tough plastic. So what I was thinking about doing is possibly drilling two holes that correspond um, with those holes there through here, putting an eye bolt through and a washer and a wing nut the other end or through this side and securing it to there and obviously the table up there as well. So it's secured to the front of this so it drops down more but also it's out the way of the, the street scene and then we could really really go to town and put things on there a bit more uh, but there's no point in me doing that if we can't see the darn thing so that's my opinion um, let me know what you think in the comments box below guys because um, it's a shame because this is really coming on isn't it I'm really pleased with it so far the lights have enhanced it um, very pleased with the, some of the shots I've, I've taken today both um, the photographic shots and also the video shots that I've used for this video today. I'm really pleased with things so far. Um, but again, um, it's a good idea, but it's now, <laughs> it's creating like a big uh, it, wall for these residents. They can't see anybody and I can't see them. So um, yeah, we need to sort that out, don't we? We really need to do something about that. Um, and plus it will give me my space back along here really um, for putting stock out and having things on there and um place with me tea and everything like that. <laughs> um yeah it's it has to go uh, down a little bit further it has to come off this table now because we've um we've brought everything forward because obviously we built the extension before this was ever there if you flick through the videos on the channel again you'll see that um it used to sit right back on the table and it wasn't a problem but now we've got this beautiful street scene taking place um, it really does sort of get in the way and I can't do so much camera shots as you've seen today whereas if this wasn't here if it was below out of sight a bit more then um, definitely I think that would improve well, I've got a week or so off um, in terms of my daughter off school and being able to set things up so I think what I'll do next week a little project is I'll I'll try and mount that on the side of those two tables just do two holes and fix that on there and see how we go that's the way forward i think anyway that's all from me now um i'll be back 
now in the next video to show you what I've, the goodies I've got from eBay and they are definitely worth tuning in for. Um, I'm so pleased with these lights. They really are um, a great idea uh, for the layout. I think they turned out rather well and uh, hopefully my little layout has given you the inspiration out there to go and try something similar yourself on your own layout. Or if you haven't got a model railway yet, um, there's nothing stopping you having a go. Um, I've done it probably with the 6x4 layout. Um, you might even do something even smaller. You might go for TT 120. <laughs> <laughs> I won't make no sarcastic comments about that. Um, but something like um, N-Gage. I just want to say something about N-Gage before I go. I'm not an N-Gage guy. I'm not an N-Gage fan. But if I went to a model railway show or someone invited me around their house and they had an N-Gage, um, I wouldn't walk away from it. Um, I think they are brilliant little trains. They are literally little and it's a very, very fine scale, but you can get a lot done with N-Gage. I know there's loads of N-Gage modelers out there that are probably watching this video. Um, if you know someone or yourself models N-Gage, brilliant, that's fantastic, um, because it is a very space-saving idea if you choose to go for N-Gage. Me personally, I've always grown up with double O, so that's why I've stuck to double O. Um, and I've got obviously a lot of collection of double O scale stuff. And I would just throw it aside and then next day, oh, I'll go out and start engage. But um, just for example, if you had a baseball this side, which is six by four, as mentioned, if you did this in N, my goodness, you would have a decent size, very, very decent size layout. You can get a lot done with engage. Um, but in the meantime, I think my humble little six by four is coming on quite nicely. There is still tons and tons and tons and tons to do. You wouldn't believe it, it's never finished. Um, whether you've got a model railway this size or you've got something set up in the loft, um, the thing about our hobby is I think we'd all agree that it's never finished. There's always something to do on it or something to come up with an idea or something to model. Um, just goes to show, my little street thing, um, that's starting as a little idea in my head. I found the materials and then I stopped procrastinating and actually started doing the thing. So uh, there we go. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, that's what I would say. I'm not going to say being and it, but <laughs> that's only if you live in the UK, you'll get that. Um, but yeah, so thanks very much for your viewing today. Have a lovely rest of your weekend. I'll get this uploaded to YouTube and I hope that you enjoy this one. And I will be back, I'll be back for the next video very soon. And I will see you soon in the next video. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Take care. All the best. Goodbye for now.